Hello guys, we are OGS, I'm Stavros And I am Phil And we are currently at our overclocking lab in Athens As you can see we've got quite a space here We've got tons of uh, motherboards, Asus motherboards uh, Galaxy cars mostly And recently we received the new Ballistics Elite 3600 MHz based on the new Micron eDI uh, we did a war record, a memory frequency war record. Yeah, we surpassed the 5.7 gigahertz barrier. Yeah. yeah, it was quite awesome to be honest. It, it was the easiest war record, one of the easiest war records we have done yeah. in the past one year. It took only like uh, voltage and call. It's because we applied the same settings we usually do, uh, but we found out that the memory scale big time with voltage and uh, call. Yes, and they didn't need uh, those fluctuations that uh, you need to go lower temperature, and higher back yeah. and uh, things exactly. like this. Exactly, yeah. that's a big point because previously <laughs> you would need to go minus 140 uh, Celsius and then go uh, up to minus 80 in order to uh, put in the windows. But actually this wasn't needed. Uh, we only tested four memory sticks uh, on there. Yeah and uh, two of these on liquid nitrogen. Four of them were really close on the air clocking, but we only had time to test the two of them. The first one did the world record easily, 5.63 yes. uh, uh, gigahertz, but then we realized that the second one was way better. With the, yeah. This is the one we use for the world record. So, uh, we haven't maxed it out yet, so we are hoping that we will uh, manage uh, to get it back uh, soon. And the thing is like, maybe even the last two uh, memory sticks are even better, nobody knows, so we need yeah, to try it. We'll see, we'll see. What else? We want to talk to you about the new uh, Micron eDI. As you can see, the memories we bought are pretty much retail. They are retail, form. yes. Yeah. Uh, according to Ballistics, they have been out for like two months now. It is quite interesting that nobody uh, noticed that, to be honest, because it wasn't, uh, it didn't get any spotlight, unfortunately. But after the whole record and our test, uh, we saw a lot of people actually trying their eDI kits to find out that they are quite good actually. Yeah. We had zero yeah. compatibility issues. Uh, I, we don't have yeah. a name. We didn't find any in uh, Asus motherboards. Yeah. No. So exactly, that, that was a pretty uh, big advantage in my opinion because it was kind of unexpected. It was like uncharted uh, territories, uncharted waters, I would say. But what's surprising is like we read from other overclockers that uh, they also had no compatibility issues with AMD Ryzen CPUs that tend to be more picky when it comes to the memory controller and motherboard, uh, as far as I know. So they managed to do like 3.6 GHz easily, which is quite surprising to be honest, I mean for these CPUs. The other good news is like we saw tons of scaling with uh, voltage on air. And the maximum, we didn't need uh, to set a maximum setting. For those of you that don't know, uh, usually in order to get memories really high with high voltage or tight timings, or both, you need to set a maximum of what? It was like. 2, 3 giga. Yes, gigabytes. Bytes. Depending yeah. on the platform, if yeah. I go correctly. Yeah. We're looking forward to testing these memes on uh, liquid nitrogen to see how tight we can get them because we saw how high we can get them. So right now we want to see the best, let's say, curve like between the frequency and timings in order to get the maximum uh, performance out of them. Mm -hmm. Of course we will keep you posted because I think it's like quite interesting having new memories in the space um, for the first time in like what? Two, three years, I think? Two, three, yeah. Yeah, we really hope that we can get some awesome results for you guys, so you can see. I mean, we will be more than happy to break more records or find out some kind of secret recipe that the eDI surpasses every other IC out there. So it really depends, and uh, you need to find the best recipe, let's say. And the thing is, like, it, this has been done for different uh, modules before. So we had three hours because it was, we usually have two sessions per week, yeah. two evenings because of family and work and everything, you know, so it happens, you know. So we only had three, uh, we had only three hours to test two sticks that were never been called, never tested any EDI before in called, we didn't know any, if there are any tricky parts, if they stay with cold, if they have cold boot, cold bag or whatever. And 
That's why we said it was pretty easy, as we mentioned before. Uh, what we want to tell you is like, what you might not know is like, the Micron E die is produced by obviously Micron, and Ballistics is a sub brand of Micron, which means that in the future we might see uh, higher beam products because the the memory the memory brand right. that creates the memories, the memory modules, the complete memory modules, is the one that also engineers and creates the memory chips uh, as well. This allows them to actually do better beaming than uh, they competitors. Are, they are made from scratch. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. they they take everything, they make uh, make it from scratch. So I guess it leaves them with more space to do beaming that you see on uh, competitors. Gives us a stability on the results, I guess, from uh, yeah. stick to stick. I mean, it's not 100% sure, but that's what I, I would expect at least. I mean, if you produce the memory chip and then you produce the memory kit as well, that you uh, if you have the chance to do uh, more in-depth testing compared to others that take memory chips from. What, and the producer A and PCBs from producer B and they make them together, like put them together. While we were doing some testings, uh, we thought to add the part of this clip on which we will be showing you the performance gains from overclocking the memory kit. Unfortunately, as we were eager to test this, we didn't save any screenshots at stock settings aka XMP, but the result on the memory test of Yigmes 3, which we'll be using as a reference point, was about 6.5 to 6.k points. First, we started with the 4133 divider and the cast latency of 17. We already applied some timings from the standard profiles that are included on the BIOS of the ASUS Z390 Maximus 11 gene, with just some small adjustments to get this to work. So our initial test resulted in almost 7.3 uh, thousand memory score on Geekbench with 1.45 volts on the memories. I believe this is a good indicator of how well the memories take the tight timings without the need for setting a maximum setting. Afterwards we thought to push it a bit harder to see if there is any scaling with voltage. And the result was to achieve cast latency of 14 at 4.2 GHz with about 1.8 volts. This improved our score by almost 200 points. As expected, we even get even further to see how tight we can get uh, the memories at this frequency. End result was to get this to run at 13, 18, 18 using 1T command rate with 1.92 volts. This resulted in an improvement of 250 points compared to our previous test and over 1000 uh, improvement, which is about 20% compared to the stock settings. Since we're quite uh, limited with time, we did another couple of tests at 4.4 GHz with the memories at cast latency of 16. Even though this wasn't the most optimized run, as the RTLs were loose and we were uh, running at 2T command rate, we managed to get another 30 points uh, to reach the memory score of uh, 7784. For this, 1.85 volts were used and it shows us that some benchmarks like Geekbench scale more with frequency rather than time timings on the memories. The exciting part came when we started uh, testing the memories for maximum frequency or liquid nitrogen. At the point of testing, the war record was about 5610 MHz. Since we are talking about memory chips that we haven't tested before, we used the guide made by Samino as a guideline. To our surprise, the first stick did about 5630 MHz with a bit over 2 volts and then temperatures of minus 170 celsius. Luckily this was beaten while we were having our overclocking session, so we knew that we had to try harder and higher. Using the second stick with exactly the same testing and a bit lower temperature this time, we managed to break the 5.7 GHz barrier to reach the, th the frequency of uh, 5726 MHz. This is it at this point as we had to get ready for Comitex and pack our hardware. Hopefully we will be able to do more tests right after the exhibition and see how tight the memories can go on cold. So, uh um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We will keep you posted uh, with results uh, when we try the memories on call. Uh, of course, you will uh, find out if we also uh, manage to break the war record again. So yeah, uh, keep it up, overclock, and thank you for watching us. Thank you. Bye.